Welcome guys to this special tutorial. Finally here the method you can use to fix the radius of your curves using geometry node. With this method you will be able to have even radius like the even thickness of the solidify modifier or blender using only one group node in your workflow. So let's get started. As you can see now I am in blender version 4.0.2 and uh, this is a simple curve uh, added with the shift a curve bezier. I change it the position position of the control point of this curve as you can see I set uh, all this control point with A and press V to set this uh, point as a vector and uh, on this curve I have a geometry node workflow very simple and as you can see this is the setup we have the geometry in this curve and we have a set curve radius to set uh, a custom uh, value for all the control points and uh, next I have the common node curve to mesh with a curve line from minus one and plus one on the x-axis to have the profile on my curve so you had this issue in lots of your project I'm really sure and to fix this problem we need to understand the math behind this problem in one of my previous tutorial I show with you an example of a line and another line so we have a control point here here, a control point here and here and if you have 90 degrees you can easily multiply these radius by square root of 2 to have the correct radius and in this way the correct profile of this curve and I got this solution thanks to a user that commented this solution in my previous tutorial of the procedural HUD HUD and you can find this video with the link in the description or in my channel and this solution worth only with the case of 90 degrees but what if I have a, a different degrees than 90 degrees so I need to solve this problem for every degrees if I take this control point and I move it here around this pivot so let's increase these degrees here in this example so as you can see we have the profile that we need and we have here the base profile and we have a base radius here and we can call this radius R and here in green I drew the new radius we need to calculate and as you can see this line is bigger than this line and uh, if I have two segments one in this direction and the next in the same direction I have the same radius for the start and for the end of calculation but in this case I have here a little piece you can see if I rotate this segment on this line you can see this little piece that is the result of the factor I need to multiply by the basic radius so how to calculate this new radius it's not hard to do because uh, it depends on uh, the angle that is uh, between this uh, segment and this segment and if I increase uh, this alpha angle like this uh, case you can see a bigger new radius because this is the start radius we have here and here we have the new radius bigger than this and if I increase more the angle you can see this effect if I rotate this segment going near the previous segment so the previous segment goes in this direction and the second in this direction if I take these and rotate to be closer to the previous segment you can see this alpha goes near 90 degrees as the maximum angle I can have with this rotation so the minimum rotation is zero degrees and while I'm rotating the next segment this alpha increases from zero to the maximum of 90 degrees and as you can see you can imagine we have here the same radius here I have a little big radius here we have very big radius and imagine if this segment was on this segment to the opposite direction we would have an infinite length of radius okay because here there would be a straight line green with the length of infinite so step by step how we can calculate this 
new radius from this. It's simple. Remember the trigonometry of a single rectangular triangle like this, and I know how to calculate x from the a, the hypotenuse, and the alpha angle in between. So x is equal to the hypotenuse cosine of the alpha. And to get this component is the same length of the hypotenuse sin of the alpha. In our case, as you can see, we have r equal to x and the new r, the new radius, equal to a. So I can replace this formula in this formula, where r is equal to the new radius cosine of the alpha. At this point, you know the radius, the basic radius, because it's the same radius we have in the geometry node set here, in the set curve radius. So we already know this value but we need to calculate this r. So if we divide each of these members of this equation by cosine of alpha, we have r divided by cos alpha equal to the new radius. And this is the formula. We can rewrite this in r multiplied by 1 divided by cos alpha. And this is our factor. So more I increase this alpha angle between this segment and this segment, segment, okay, this alpha, more factor I have to multiply. Why? Because, let's make the calculation, if the alpha is equal to 0, we have r multiplied by 1 divided by 1, because cosine of 0 equal 1, and this means that the new r is equal to the previous r, and all works. In this case, we already have this formula, and also for this case, the same formula, and the same formula for this case, and for the case of the opposite direction, okay, so I rotated the second segment all around to be opposite to the previous, you have alpha equal to 90 degrees, and with alpha equal to 90 degrees, we have a cosine of 90 degrees equal 0, so we have a hypothetical new radius equal to the previous multiplied by 1 divided by 0. This goes to infinite. You can also see this effect because if I take this shape, I go to the edit mode, I take this control point and I go to the opposite direction. You can see the radius of my point here tends to be near zero and to have a good balance uh, with a, a very little number i need to multiply with a very big number to maintain the correct radius and profile here now that we have this uh, factor we need to calculate this cosine of alpha so we need to know the alpha but uh, instead of knowing exactly the number of the alpha we can calculate this cosine of alpha using a different vector on this example. So as you can see, this alpha here is the result between this direction vector, so the vector outwards the control point, and this vector that is perpendicular to the direction of the previous segment. But look at this, the magenta vector is the tangent of the control point, and this orange direction is the direction of the next segment. So the angle we have between these two vectors is the same we have here. And I can prove you with this little model here, when I have the first segment from here to here, and the second segment from here to here, and if I rotate this object, you can see we have a starting alpha between the tangent of the control point and the orange vector, so the direction of the next segment. And if I increase this rotation, you can see the same angle we have in this example, so the same alpha here. And if I continue to increase and increase this rotation, you can see we get 90 degrees. So the same trend of the alpha between this segment and the direction outwards from the control point. So because of this, we can calculate the cosine of this alpha normalizing 
these vectors, and you know the tangent of a control point is already a normalized vector, so we need to take this direction, normalize this vector, and calculate what the dot product between these two vectors. What is the dot product? The dot product is a way to know, for example, if two vectors are parallel or perpendicular, or to project one vector on another vector. And uh, as you can see, is a similar way used here to get the x from an hypotenuse uh, and imagine an hypotenuse uh, equal to one as the values, you would have here one multiplied by cosine of the alpha. So the value of the x equal to the projection of uh, a unit length on this other vector. Okay, this vector on this vector. So if we have a circle with the radius of one and the origin point here, to get the dot product, you need to take this radius on the x axis, rotate by the alpha you need, and then project it on the x axis to get this segment. This segment is the cosine of the alpha and it's obvious if you have a radius greater or different than one you need to multiply this value by this new radius because in this case you have only cosine of, of alpha as it would be one multiplied by cosine of the alpha because in this case the radius is equal to one but in our case we can have a different radius but in general if you want to calculate the dot product, the result is this. The module from the vector 1 multiplied by the module of the vector 2 cosine of the alpha. And because we need only this part, because is the vector we need in our formula, we need to transform this and get from this only 1. And to do this, we only need to normalize the length of these two vectors. And the tangent, one of these is already normalized. The other we need to normalize because this is the vector of the handle of the control point. In this way, we can rewrite these in R multiplied by 1 divided by the dot product between the tangent vector and the direction of the next segment. And now let's jump in the geometry nodes to create this formula. So we have the wrong shape here and we can move this a little bit. And as described before, we need to add in between a set curve radius that is what the previous radius multiply by what? By 1 divided by this dot product. So the dot product between the tangent that is this and this direction. So we know the tangent of the curve. It's easy to get. We need to calculate the dot product from this vector. But keep in mind how we can get this direction. So you need to know that in Blender each control point has two handles, a left and right handle, and how you identify one or the other. So so you have to remember that the left handle goes to the opposite direction of the direction of the curve, while the right handle goes through the direction of the curve. Okay, so in this case, the curve goes in this direction, and for this reason, this is the right handle, and this is the left handle. So in our case, we can get directly the vector of this right handle to get the orange vector on the curve for each control point. It's very easy to do. And to get this information, we can add a handle position and make sure to check the relative because otherwise you would have here not the vector relative to the position of the control point, but the vector from the global origin point. Point. So instead of having this vector here that Blenders, I remember you, gives you from the origin point, it would give us the vector of the right handle from the global origin point. So this vector, we don't want this vector, we want this vector. So with the relative checked, Blender auto calculates the difference between this vector and this vector. So the vector of the position of the control point to get only the difference vector. If you don't check uh, the relative, it's not a problem. You could do the same uh, subtracting from the position of this uh, right hand 
angle, the position of the control point itself. You would get the same result of the vector, it's the same. But to, but to simplify the operation, the team of Blender added this relative to instantly give us the right vector. So after this right handle, we need to normalize this vector. It's very important because, as you can see, I can take whatever handle I need and move it, increasing own entire length. And we don't want this because we want to normalize this value to have the correct value of one inside the dot product result. In this way, I can link this in the dot product and link this result here in the dividing operation. And now that I have this formula, I can link this multiply in the new set curve radius and voila, the geometry without and with the correct radius. But we have a big problem here. In this moment, you are seeing the shape from the Z view so the perpendicular view on the planes where these segments are in this moment but if I use a different profile not a curve line but for example a curve circle and I link this to the profile from this point of view all works but what if I change the point of view in this way something is happening so what is happening in this moment it's a very normal behavior Don't be scared. Now if I mute for a moment the set curve radius you have the problem from this perspective but you don't have this problem from this angle. Why? Because if I press Shift Z to see the wireframe method, you can see the correct shape Blender uses for each control point, the correct radius equal for each control point, as you can see, okay, the area is correct and the radius is constant for all these control points. But if I set my curve radius, I increase the radius constantly in all the directions for all the the control points so the entire radius increases and all the points are stretched out from the control point so I decrease for a moment to eight vertices uh, the profile and as you can see if I mute for a moment uh, these we are passing from this little area to this new area so knowing the correct uh, final radius we don't need to set the curve radius but save the factor inside the control point let the curve to mesh create the final mesh and then stretch the vertices only along the vector outwards and inwards. So to do this, imagine to cut this uh, section in this way, and in this way we have the correct uh, x-axis, and we need to have the y-axis like this, and we need to stretch these vertices multiplying it by the factor we store in the control point to have the correct position in the 3D space. So keep in mind that these x can be in this direction or can be another direction depending on the direction of our point. So if I take this point and I go down here, the x-axis would not be this direction, but I would need to cut these like these to have the correct x direction and find the relative y direction, okay, to be able to stretch the vertices in the correct plane of these sections. So it's not hard to do this and to help you understand this I prepared this section. So imagine we have the eight vertices with the basic radius. So our R from these to these. This is R and this is the new radius and we need to stretch the X component of these vertices from the original point of the mesh created to the final position on the bigger mesh. So to do this we need to take the vector of the position for each vertex, calculate and separate the X and the Y component. Next we are going to increase and stretch only the X multiplying this component by our new factor, so the one 
divided by the cos alpha and then we are going to recreate the new vector adding the x component with the y component so in detail let's uh, take this uh, vector here this point is the position of the control point and this is the position of the vertex uh, in the space and we are looking uh, this uh, image from the point of view perpendicular to the section of the shape to have a good looking of the area we want to stretch and this is, ve this is very important because this direction of the x-axis is equal to the direction outwards uh, the two segments of the curve okay so if the curve goes in this direction we have the vector outwards in this direction and uh, this vector is equal to the x-axis we need here in this coordinates system so as you can see here if i want the x i need to take the l so the length of the vector and multiply by the cosine of the alpha if i want the y i need to take the l and multiply by the sine of the alpha then i need to multiply multiply by our factor so the radius factor we are going to store inside our control points and then we are going to recreate from these new x and the previous y the new vector to set the correct position of the vertex and as you can see this line is the vector of the original position of the vertex in the mesh and leaving the same y distance you you can see this point as the new position because I stretched only the X component from here to here to have the correct new vector of the vertex and as you can see we have in Azure the shape of the original position of the vertices and with this green shape we have the correct final position of the vertices of the shape so as described before we don't need to know exactly the alpha value to calculate these cos alpha or sin alpha we can use the dot product to simplify the operation because we only need the direction of this vector and the direction of this vector so the direction of the x-axis of our coordinate system and the direction of our vector so for this reason we can replace these x as the module of our vector so the length of our vector multiply these by the module of the second vector the first vector is these for example and the second vector is this the x direction we need to normalize this to have it equal to one okay and multiplying it by the cosine of alpha and this is equal to write the length of the vector one multiplied by the cos alpha and as you can see it's the same of this formula for the y we can use not the dot product but the cross product that is the same idea but using the sine of the alpha next i'm going to show you what is the cross product so we can calculate this y as the vector 1 module vector 2 sin of the alpha and this will give you not a number but a vector but uh, we don't care because we need to know the length of this vector to get uh, the correct uh, value we need and also in this case we normalize these to have one for the x axis so let's jump in the geometry node and as i said we don't need to apply directly the set curve radius here but i need to store this information inside the control points and take also the curve to mesh and create a unique control g group for our even radius workflow because after the curve to mesh we need to do this calculation so i can draw drop this set curve we have the curve that we can call the base curve the profile curve and also we can add in the group input the fill caps we can link the profile curve here move this a little bit and first of all we need to save and store this information inside our control point we can add a store name attribute link this inside link the multiply inside the this store name attribute and call it radius factor we can select all these nodes ctrl j f2 save factor to stretch the vertices 
of the mesh but wait a moment to calculate each of these vector we need to know the position of the vertex of the mesh and this is easy because for this i have the position field but for the position of the control point we need to save this information before the curve to mesh because after this curve to mesh i lost the position of the control point of a curve because i'm converting a curve to a mesh okay so to avoid losing this uh, information i need to save the position of the control point inside my curve linking this geometry here and then this i can call it position of the control point i can select this control j f2 save position of control points and uh, to calculate this vector i remember you blender gives you the vector from the global origin point so to get this vector you need to subtract track from this vector so the position of the vertex the vector of the control point to get the difference vector so the correct length and vector from the control point and the position of the vertex and we also need before using this curve to mesh what this vector so the direction outwards the control point in the curve okay because otherwise i can calculate the correct direction where i need to separate the components and stretch the x and recreate the correct vector in our section of the mesh so to calculate this direction we need to use the cross product and now i'm going to show you how this works so imagine you have this curve and this is the direction of our curve the cross product is a way to to create a vector perpendicular to the plane that contains the two vectors involved in the formula so we have this plane on which we have these two vectors if you apply a cross product between this vector and this vector with an angle less than 180 degrees you would have a vector in this direction otherwise if you have an angle greater than 180 degrees or if you reverse the order of the vectors in the formula you would have the perpendicular vector in the other direction how you can write it imagine this is the vector one and this is the vector two if you do the cross product vector one and vector two sin of the alpha and this is this is the formula you will have a vector in the direction i described before but with the, a length equal to the product from the length of the first and the second vector and the sin of the alpha so the sin of the angle in between so this can let you think if i have two vectors parallel the alpha is equal to zero and the sin of zero is equal to zero so the result vector would have a length of zero so no vector if i would have a vector like this with 90 degrees i would have two perpendicular vectors so the sin of the 90 degrees is equal to one and the result of the length of this vector would be the simple product between the length of the first vector and the length of the second vector so as you can see here if you use vector one and vector two with this order you have the vector in this direction as you can see here but if you write the vector two cross product vector one sin of the alpha and i repeat with a, an angle in between less than 100 180 degrees okay you would have the opposite direction of the vector so don't be scared if you don't remember the result of the vector in the 3d space you can imagine the three axes of the 3d space like this so the x is the first vector the y is the second vector in the order and the z is the result direction of the vector from the cross product so imagine we have the vector one as the x and we have here a plane inside this x and y the vector 2 as the y and if you use this sequence x and y you have the direction of the z x y and z vector 1 vector 2 
vector 3 as the result in this direction, the same direction of the z-axis. If you reverse the order of this vector, you have the opposite direction of the z. Okay, so if you don't remember the correct direction, I suggest you to use the reference of the x, y and z axis. The first vector, the second vector, the result vector. So in our case, we need to calculate this direction outward from the control point and as you can see we have 90 degrees between this vector and the tangent of the control point it's obvious and if i look this from this perspective we need to find this vector from what from these two vectors so we already know the tangent direction we already know the direction of the right handle of the control point here so we need to make a first cross product between this vector for example and this vector and if i take this vector and make a cross product with this vector of the tangent i have a vector in the minus z in this case and then as you can see i can use this plane between these two vectors to calculate another cross product with the same tangent direction to get this new vector in the space with the reference of these three axes so if i take as the x this new vector created and for the y this tangent vector i would have a z in this direction okay imagine to rotate these axes this coordinate system to have the x the y in this direction i would have the z in this direction so after this operation i need to normalize why because the first cross product has here an alpha not equal to 90 degrees it's obvious so i would not have one as the result of the sine but a smaller number so the length of this vector would not be equal to one it's obvious and for the same reason if i make a cross product between this length that is not one and this length that is one it's okay for the alpha because i have 90 degrees and a sine of the alpha equal to one so i would have one by one but multiplied by this length that is different than one so the length of this vector would not be one in this particular case so i need to normalize after all these two cross product math operations to have a total length of one so let's jump in the geometry nodes we can go inside our group node we can call even radius press tab to enter inside and now we can calculate this correct direction so we can take the right handle position with this relative checked and from this we can create a cross product with the, what the tangent curve and in this way i get this white line perpendicular to this plane and then i can use this result to create another cross product with the tangent this tangent vector to get the new vector in this direction and now i need to normalize this and save the information in a new variable inside my uh, control point because after the curve to mesh i would lose this information i can link these to these and these to these i can call it direction out select all these nodes ctrl j f2 save vector outwards control point now it's time to create the mesh create the mesh and now i need to tweak the position of our vertices as described here so i need to calculate this vector and this vector what is is the position of my vertex from this position i need to subtract what the position of the control point because i remember you we have the vector of the vertex but from the global origin point 
of the coordinate system. Then we have the position of the control point always from the global origin point of the coordinate system and the difference in, in between is the vector we need. So I can add a read name attribute and set here the position of the control point and this is the vector of vertex based on pose of the control point. Now that we have this result we need to separate the x and the y component. How? We know this direction we calculated before with this green vector and we can use the dot product to get the x component. So I can add a name attribute to get the direction out vector, create a dot product to project the vector on this axis with a length of one and if I do this I get the x segment of the vector so this is the x component if I want the y component I can use the same idea but using the cross product so with the direction I can calculate the cross product with this vector and because here we have a vector as the result I need to calculate the length of this vector to get the y component and this is the y component needs to be the same so I need to leave as is now that I have the x component I need to multiply this x by our factor so I can easily add another name attribute and get the radius factor we stored before simply multiply this value by the x stretch the x by the factor and then we need to recreate the new final vector so the x component needs to be on a vector in the same direction of this vector outwards so to do this we need to get the name attribute we need to re get the direction out in scale because the length of this vector is one is already normalized we can scale this vector by the x component so in this way i can have the new x vector from this point and this point for this vertex x vector and for the y vector how can I get this direction that is perpendicular to this direction? So I needed to add and get the direction out vector, this vector here. And as you can see, we can get the vector of the vertex, the vector of the direction outwards and make a cross product to create a new vector in this direction or this direction it's the same but next with this new plane where this vector and this vector stay because this is the new plane in 3d space we can create another cross product from this vector and the direction vector to create the new y axis in this direction so keep in mind the correct order of these vectors to create the correct direction of the result of the cross product so for example let's take this vector as the x axis described here in the reference if this is the x and the direction outwards is the y we have a final vector in this direction so imagine always the x and the y rotated this is the x this is the y direction this is the z and next we need to have this direction in this way and to have this way so the z component this will be the x axis this will be the new y axis to create the z axis so the order will be this direction and then the result of the previous cross product so for these we can get the position of our vector and we can duplicate these why not we can create a cross product between this vector and the direction to get this vector here that is the y vector so the second vector in the 
next cross product. So we need to create the cross product between the direction as the x and next the result of the previous cross product as the y to get the correct direction of the new result vector in this way and not in this way. Next, here we need to normalize because we need to have always a length of one at the end of all these calculation. And now we can scale this vector by what? By the y component because it needs to be the same for our vector. Now take uh, all these nodes, Control J F2, Y vector. Now we can add this X with the Y and get uh, the final vector of the vertex. But keep in mind that this vector is calculated always from the global origin point. So this result uh, of the vector is here okay is pointing from the origin point of the global system so we need to add the position of the control point to move in the 3d space the point in the correct place and to do this we need to add another name attribute to get the position of our control point and add what this vector as you can see is the opposite operation we made here so we take the position we subtract the position of the control point to have the single piece next we made a new piece of vector and we need to re-add the original position of the control point and now we can add here a set position node inside the mesh and link these to the set position now if i go on my geometry you can see we have a little issue why because here in this save a factor to stretch the vertices of the mesh i multiplied the previous vector by the factor or already here in this moment and this is not correct because I need to save only the factor because I need to change after the curve to mesh the position of the vertices so I need to save only the factor inside our control point now as you can see we have a correct result on my mesh but uh, here in the starting point we have a problem why because for the first uh, element we don't have a direction outwards of the curve because I have no previous uh, segment and Blender uh, calculates this direction as a point of 0, 0 and 0 and uh, for this reason we can filter this uh, calculation only on the points uh, that has the radius factor not equal to 1 because if I have the radius factor equal to 1 I have the same the same radius of before so if I have a radius factor of 1 I am in this context so the new radius is equal to the previous radius so we can go inside the this set position and filter if the name attribute radius vector is not equal to one and link these to the selection and as you can see now all works because i maintain the vertices with the same radius factor as is here or here maybe and calculate the correct set position on the other vertices of the mesh shift on position of the control point filtered now i can go out with the tab from this group node and add for example a shade smooth geometry like this i can link this output to the geometry to see the correct shape i can increase the radius of my shape as i need i can move this and as you can see the correct stretching on the new direction outwards from the control point with no issue i can increase or decrease the resolution of my segment and it's obvious i can also change the curve profile as a, a star for example and you can see the correct new area maintaining the same height 
it's a bit difficult to see i decrease uh, a little bit the angle to see the area okay in this way if i press shift z you can see the correct star stretched only in these two directions but leaving the same height now from this workflow you can use this group node and set it as an asset if you want clicking with the right button on the name and mark as asset like this and with this information you know how it works and how you can fix this problem on your own and uh, you can use uh, my group node uh, appending it uh, in your project going on the file menu append or link if you prefer double select my file double select the node tree folder and then select the even radius group node thank you guys for watching this video i hope you learned something from it i hope you will use this group node a lot in your project you can download this project from my gumroad page if you like my work please subscribe to my channel don't forget to check the bell icon to get the notification about the new videos and see you to the next tutorial Bye.